Well, the fight for Florida is five days away, and the numbers are tightening up in this latest CNN Time poll. Romney maintains a slight lead with 36 percent to Gingrich's 34 percent. Santorum comes in at 11, and Paul is behind with 9 percent. It represents a 16-point surge for Gingrich, 7-point decline for Romney, but then apparently there was some one-day surging the other way. Let's bring in our panel. Ramesh Panuru is senior editor for the National Review and a columnist with Bloomberg View. Susan Page is USA Today's Washington bureau chief. And former Virginia Democratic Congressman Tom Perriello is now president of the Center for American Progress's Action Fund. Welcome all. Susan, let me start with you. This has been the most bizarrely volatile race. I talked to uh, a pollster affiliated with one of the campaigns who said, They've never seen one-day moves in tracking. They used to not, and, and we're seeing it in the public polls. They're seeing it in their own private polls. Very unstable race. It's, and it's been from the beginning, right? We've seen one after another. I mean, it's clear Republicans want a nominee, but they don't have a clue they want a nominee. who it is. <laughs> I'm not like a nominee. convinced of that. Actually, I think there are some Republicans. You know, Alex Castellano famously said, you know, actually, we're not going to tell the public who the nominee is until the day after the election. Yeah. Yeah. They'd like a nominee. They'd like a nominee who could win. Uh, but the calculation about who that is keeps going around the moon. It, you bring up the moon. Fair enough. Uh, yesterday, it was interesting to hear how Newt Gingrich's talking point against Mitt Romney and the Democratic talking points against Mitt Romney started to converge. I want to play two sound bites back to back from Gingrich and Dick Durbin. Listen. I think you have to live in a world of, of, of Swiss bank accounts and Cayman Island accounts and automatic you know, $20 million a year income with no work to have some fantasy this far from reality. I mean, this verges, this is an Obama-level fantasy. If we have reached a point in America where it is considered normal and expected that an American business leader opens a Swiss banking account or invest in notorious tax havens like the Cayman Islands in Bermuda, if that has become normal, I think we need to have a new normal. Tom Perriello, you're at the Center for American Progress, a big Democratic think tank. Are you going to be using that line on Swiss bank accounts against Mitt Romney all the way till November? Well, I think what you're seeing here is a huge shift from what uh, the Beltway thinks of as a right-left conversation from really a Main Street conversation about what's normal and what's fair. So you think Gingrich because, is on the right track here? He's well, having a problem, better Main Street conversation than Mitt Romney is? Sure, but Newt Gingrich's problem is that under the tax plan he proposes, Mitt Romney would pay nearly zero dollars in taxes. So what we actually see is a convergence of conservative plans that actually really hit the working and middle class and hit seniors um, and really protect that top 1%. And so the same thing with the Freddie and Fannie conversation. It's not just something hitting Gingrich because of his fees. It's also something where Romney himself has made a lot of money from investments in these same people that created the, uh, many of the problems that have left Floridians underwater. So we're getting to a conversation about that kitchen table set of issues for working and middle class families, and that's one that I think has conservatives on the, on the retreat. But Ramesh, Karl Rove the other day said he's very concerned at the tone of this campaign that they're essentially both uh, uh, severely damaging each other for a potential general election. Do you buy that? Well, that's a primary, you know. Yeah, look, the funny. incentives of each of these candidates is to tear down the other, not to look ahead to what happens in November and the case that they lose. They don't care about that as much. Uh, I'm actually not as worried about that. Uh, I think that, you know, either the public is going to find the Swiss bank account attack important and convincing, or it's not. Either Romney's going to have, if, he, if he's the nominee, either he's going to have a good response to that, or he's not. And the fact that Gingrich happened to make the same claim in the spring that the Democrats are going to make in the fall, I think, is a much smaller factor. Yeah, you know, Susan Page, uh, another part of this campaign that I think is just history-making is that Newt Gingrich essentially has one backer. It's uh, the, uh, the Adelson household in Las Vegas. And for the first time, uh, Gingrich was asked about this and about these donations, Super PAC, and what is Sheldon Adelson's motivations behind it. Here's what Newt said. Have you promised him something in return for the donations? I promised him that I would made. seek to defend the United States and the United States allies. Did you and know if, he was going to be donating all this money to your Super PAC? Did you no, I don't know anything about the Super PAC, except what I read in the newspapers. And he is deeply motivated by the question of having a commander-in-chief strong enough and willing to make sure that the Iranians do not get nuclear weapons. And this is what Mike Isikoff's reporting has found out, that basically Adelson's number one issue is Israel. Well, of course, and that's the issue on which uh, they, uh, he and Newt Gingrich originally forged a, a friendship. Gingrich actually no changed surprise. his views about a two-state solution. 
Uh, actually, uh, more so ever since he's gotten to know Abbott. And a commitment on moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, which he's he's made, promised he'd do it in the first two hours of his presidency. You know, Newt Gingrich's campaign consists of two things. It consists of going from debate to debate and putting up ads that are paid by Sheldon Adelson. So, t- so that is allowed under the rules that we're operating under this time that we haven't operated under before. And it's a different scenario for a presidential campaign than we've ever had. It's wild. That's and sense. I think what you see here is not just uh, a concentration of economic power that right. Mitt Romney is represented with these tax returns, but a concentration of political power. This isn't about Adelson. This is about moving us to a point where a few individuals can dominate uh, the political process. And people are looking at a calculator of how many hours it takes Mitt Romney to make their annual income. I think this concentration very, is concerning right, to people. Very, very quick, quickly, Ramesh, is Adelson going to be a negative for Gingrich in this primary at some point? I don't think so. I don't think you're certainly not going to attack somebody for being too pro-Israel in a Republican primary. (laughs) All right. Ramesh, Susan, Congressman, stick around. The Republican establishment is just as much an establishment as the Democratic establishment, and they are just as determined to stop us. Make no bones about it. This is a campaign for the very nature of the Republican Party and the very opportunity for a citizen conservatism to defeat the power of money. Well, that was Newt Gingrich. That was just moments ago. He's speaking to a Tea Party rally in Florida. He also added a few minutes later, guys, about Mitt Romney, talking about whether he's really a conservative or not. He said, we're not that stupid and you're not that clever. He said, YouTube does exist. So referring to that, (laughs) Ramesh. Newt is the Tea Party candidate. On one hand, yes, he's an insider. But, you know, one of the things that people that isn't that that's also true of Newt is he was never comfortable as the insider. He never made the insiders here comfortable. Well, I think it's totally fair to say that he doesn't have a kind of establishment frame of mind. But it's also true that the reason the establishment of the party is against him is because so many of them know him well and do not trust him to win an election or govern successfully. Well, and that's the thing. And we've got a new NBC Wall Street Journal poll that's going to talk about and, and looked at and examined this, the electability arguments versus what's going on inside the primary, active conservatives, southern conservatives versus the rest of the party. It's going to be interesting when we're doing it. I want to talk also about the confrontation between Jan Brewer, governor of Arizona, and President Obama on the tarmac. Congressman, he made an interesting comment. He said, that's actually probably a good confrontation for both of them. <laughs> what did you mean by that? I think both probably come out political winners going into this year. Who knows what really went on? We, we can get uh, a little too into these confrontations, and sometimes a picture is a thousand words, and sometimes it's just misleading. So, uh, But I do think this is a year where uh, the president is trying to show that he's serious about wanting to do something on comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, I think Jan Brewer has made her bet in terms of where she is on the, the immigration issue and where her base is. So, uh, you know, I think this is a, a situation as well where the president has been essentially a calm force uh, through some very tough times. And I think in that picture, he looks like the calm guy <laughs> trying to be reasonable. So. You, you know, Susan, bringing up immigration here a minute, you know, Arizona is actually the next, might be the next big primary fight. Uh, and it's a, a month away. And I've been intrigued listening to the conversation Romney and Gingrich are trying to have with Hispanics and Cubans down in South Florida yesterday and wondering, boy, they're not going to have that kind of, that, that soft rhetoric actually could, not, could play poorly among Arizona Republicans. There are not a lot of Hispanic Arizona Republicans. There are in Florida. And you can't make these kind of pivots and remain keep your credibility. Yeah. I mean, they, they, but they have both taken pretty strong anti- Immigration stand. Romney. In well, particular. I was going to say Romney. Romney. I don't has. think Newt has. Newt's Gingrich actually has much. Not. Gingrich has, has and paid for it. Yes. I mean, it cost him think, some. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so he's in a better position in Florida. But what do you do in Arizona? I mean, we this has been a national campaign in some big ways. And, and you know, uh, New Hampshire and I were getting shaped by the national debate. The national, you know, it's it's not been a series of local contests. And in this day and age, where everybody's got film clips, right. uh, it is not possible to pivot on these positions. But but Florida, it, that it's funny you bring that up. And yet Florida has been more localized, right? You have, uh, you know, Gingrich pandering to the space community. You have Sugar. Romney, who changed, who, oh, no, 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 I wouldn't veto the DREAM Act. I would change it the way right. Newt wants to he wouldn't have said that. He would not have jumped in like that if the debate had been in Arizona. And if you go back to Arizona, the general election, remember, the Obama team is convinced that if McCain hadn't been the nominee last time, yeah. they could have won Arizona because of demographic change there. And one more fact what about Arizona, Congressman, I'm sure you want to jump in on this, which is the last time there was a competitive Republican primary in Arizona, 1996, and it was a race to the right. Democrats carried Arizona. 
Uh, I was actually just going to defend Newt um, and say that the pandering on the space program, he's actually been fairly consistent on that. I think that's something where he's been a strong voice on that, and he should get credit for being consistent, even if he's flip-flopped on a number of other issues. Shameless plug, Susan. Okay, you had him on Mark oh, wow. Cranish, co-author of this book on Romney. You know, if Romney's going to be the nominee, this book is going to be a big resource yeah. for journalists. Is that George Romney or Mitt Romney? Yeah. <laughs> it's remarkable. <laughs> Congressman, what do you got? Um, I've just joined the Center for American Progress. I hope people will go to thinkprogress.org and see the research we've been doing, including on uh, the economic plans and what it means for the middle class. And Ramesh. National Review Online. My employer has a great group blog called The Corner. Just celebrated its 10th anniversary. Good.